new EP coming out. It's called JPEG Raw. It's going to be out March 22. And he's going on tour. It's great live. Gary Clark Jr. Want to see him do his thing? It's going to happen Friday, May 24th at Jacob's Pavilion. You can go to AXS.com for any and all info on the show. Car 10, this pair is for you. Two for Gary Clark Jr. in May. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. Our live stream is now Scratch and Sniff in that you can scratch the screen and then sniff your fingers. Yeah, the Alan Cox Show. 100.7. WMMS. Three five one nine two, and send me a text. Our Cavs off tonight, but they won here at home against the Kings uh, at the Romo Fijo. And tomorrow night they'll be in D.C. to play the Wizards, uh, play the Nets in Brooklyn, play the Raptors up in Toronto before they come back home. Cavs basketball tomorrow night. Your FM flagship home for Cleveland Cavaliers basketball is one hundred point seven WMMS. 6.30 pregame with Michael Snyder. And uh, the whole gang, of course, you can listen on the iHeartRadio app as well. Um, oh, they announced the Guardians, too. You can start buying Guardians tickets. I guess that's exciting, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 2024 tickets, and they released the big promotional calendar, too. Single game tickets go on sale the 16th because that's, 216 day. That's my hey, birthday. Happy birthday. It is Bill Squire and my dog's birthday. And they'll start selling single game tickets for the Guardians 2024 season. Are me and Juno the same age now because of dog years? I don't know. I haven't done the math on that. The Guardians home opener, of course, on April the 8th against the Chicago White Sox. That is the day of the full solar eclipse. So it's going to be madness in Cleveland. But they have uh, the full promotional calendar is available as well, including June 22nd, which is Josh Naylor bobblehead night, but also post-game concert with Shaq Diesel. (laughs) Shaquille O'Neal post-game concert on June 22nd. I don't know who they're playing that night. But all kinds of fun things uh, ready to go, including Stephen Kwan, Obi-Kwan Kenobi, Star Wars Bob. (laughs) I like that because Uh, it's nice and smooth. Yeah. Obi-Kwan Kenobi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. June 5th is Pickleball Paddle Night. Uh, Record attendance of old people. (laughs) August 2nd is Guardian Swim Cap Night. You can't be a baseball fan without a covered head. And, uh, you know, things along the way. They're always doing something interesting over there. But the uh, Guardians tickets for the 2024 season will go on sale next Friday, 10 a.m. on February the 16th. And, of course, the 8th is the day of the solar eclipse. And, you know, we've had relatives that have hit us up and said, hey, we're probably coming to town for the eclipse. And I had really underestimated the draw of this eclipse. And I was looking at a list of, they had the top hotels in the state of Ohio that they rent, U.S. News and World Report ranked 4,000 hotels in the United States, 73 of which are in Ohio. And then they did the top 10 hotels in the state of Ohio, the very uh, top is in Cincinnati. Uh, The Hancock Hotel in Finley, Ohio, which is probably some old, you know, uh, historical, I don't know. The Ritz-Carlton Cleveland is the first Cleveland hotel that shows up on this list. But all I would imagine all of them, if you have tried to book a hotel or even look at the rates for April the 8th, So you already have Guardians opening day. I don't know how many people come from out of town for that. Probably be some people from Chicago coming in to watch the White Sox play the Guardians for opening day, maybe. 
but it's also the day of the eclipse. And so all these hotels have solar eclipse package where they basically double the price of their rooms. It is supply and demand. You know, the Ritz-Carlton, it's the number one uh, uh, number one hotel here in Cleveland. They have. I took a look this morning. They have a king room, city view, normally run you about $4.50 a night. Dude, I've been in that presidential suite. It's the solar legit. eclipse package, $9.99 for the same room. Come on. What do they throw in? Sunglasses? What do they give nothing, you? Nothing. Probably nothing. They're like, <laughs> here you go. You want to be in a hotel during the eclipse at 2 in the afternoon? Yeah, so $999 is their solar eclipse package. And I guarantee every high-end hotel has that. I don't know if you can get away with doubling your rate at the, you know, quality inn, but maybe they are. I don't know. But I think anybody who has an Airbnb in Northeast Ohio, I shouldn't even say Northeast Ohio. I mean, Cleveland is very much in that path of totality. It's not the whole area. So everybody's literally going to be descending on Cleveland because we're in that path, which doesn't happen often. There are eclipses all the time, uh, but I just underestimated the uh, the appeal of this one because it's going to be dark for like four minutes, I think, right? Not long, like three in the afternoon. Right when they get the ball game going, it's going to be pitch black. Birds are going to be bumping into stuff. and you know, So that part would be fun. The Alfred Hitchcock part of the eclipse is going to be fun. People are turning their headlights on. And, you know. I, just, I remember the eclipse that was here. People are going to be getting, you know, there's going to be looting. People are going to get mugged. That's going to be the fun part. Got to do it fast, though. We only got four minutes. Four minutes. <laughs> all way more time than you need. Say what, Cody? I said I remember when the there was a small eclipse or a, a couple years ago. Don't you remember us running out of Rockside? And everyone, uh, you see all yeah. in that business park, everyone had their little uh, sunglasses on. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny to see, like, adults act like children for like two minutes everyone was like "Ooh, let me see everyone's like sharing binoculars or like the that's that's neat i know but it was just like everyone turns into a kid again because it's like when you see a comet like no matter how old you are when you see a comet you're like oh i'm not gonna see this for another 15 years i might be dead next time this comes around (laughs) i might be dead in 15 years yeah well it's always a possibility i i still remember seeing i don't know what comet it was but my older cousin put me up on his shoulders and it was a huge comet and it, it just took up the entire sky and i would never forget it because it, it looked so like extraterrestrial like by was, the way this is all contingent on clear skies that's what i, I was mean, thinking i was like that's a lot to gamble on a clear day in cleveland I mean, it's still gonna be dark gonna obviously but it's gonna suck if it's not clear april in ohio can. Yeah. Uh, there's a really high probability that you're like, well, I don't, it's dark, but I don't see the thing happening. And you've paid $999 for the King Room at uh, the Ritz Carlton. Uh, Alan, I listen every day. Um, Want to see if you could pass something along to Mary. Ready. I don't agree with your politics, but I want all you guys to be safe. Uh, the New York mayor said uh, people are stealing scooters, riding up behind women, walking alone, and grabbing their purse and cell phones. Okay. So, Mary, to watch out for herself over there. Thank you. Yeah, I'm zooming my- up behind you, whereas all of the local scooters here in Cleveland are going into the lake uh, <laughs> in New York. They're and zooming river, up. And river. And river. I'm sorry. Uh, they're zooming up behind you and grabbing your purse and your cell phone. The crime in New York is insane. I mean, it's just a lot of people, dude. I know. I just remember my roommate who was from Jersey City, he would always talk about, because I was like, oh, man, like, you can always watch the ball drop, and, you know, you could just go into New York whenever you want. He was like, I stay in Jersey. He was like, I don't really need to go to New York unless it's, like, a business thing. And I was like, do you ever take a walk through Central Park? He's like, people get mugged in Central Park in broad daylight. We're and- just at, at Central Park on Saturday. Okay. I don't. I don't feel. Unsafe it doesn't happen. Today. I wouldn't go walking around there like at eleven o'clock at night. Yeah, but, but in yourself. broad daylight, yeah, yeah. you're okay. I, I mean, walking anywhere by yourself is always. It's like I don't wear earbuds or headphones in public. I don't because either. I'm like you I gotta want to be aware. You yes, know what's going on? Yeah, I gotta know what's going the on. The amount of people who have headphones in here really does surprise me. 
and where I'm just like, I'm that blows my mind. Unless they're not on and they just like put their earbuds in so people don't talk to them or something. My I guess is that they're on and they're just like, hey, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Well, I'm gonna not. I'm not gonna live my life in fear. Yeah. Well, people, I feel like they're on the lookout because there's a lot of gang activity and they're looking for people who they think are alone, unaware, and a, an easy target. Like I, I don't think they're trying to, you know, hurt you. Well, like rob or rape you or like kill you, but they might so, just steal from you. I was talking to a comic about this. It was I had a late spot. It was like one in the morning, and I was like, I don't want to take the train home. You know, I don't really like being. I don't really like being in the subway that late at night by myself. And he's like a six foot four black dude. He's giant. I was, and he's like, they're not gonna mess with you, blah blah. I was like, no, nobody's gonna mess with you. Like, look at you. You're very intimidating. And then there was um, another smaller female comic in the in the green room, and she was like, no, you just have to out crazy them. She's like, if a, a person comes up to you Smear acting crazy, she was like, just be crazier. She's like, you know, sh- shout some nonsense or scream at the top of your lungs or just be crazy. She's like, these people aren't looking for a fight. They're looking for easy targets. They finally finally met their match in Mary Santora. Do you not know I'm from they Korea, bitch? didn't know <laughs> what was coming. But that State was your set. <laughs> I was like, I'd rather just not have to act crazy. I'll just take an Uber. Oh, you're from Brooklyn? I'm from Berea. Ohio. Brooklyn? I'm from Berea. You don't want to mess with a bitch from Ohio. I love the videos of people walking around with those dumb Apple Vision Pro on their heads. Who's walking around with those? Well, my question is, I mean. Uh, there's like bloggers and stuff that were doing it just to Yeah, if they're it, getting yeah. paid to, to put content out there. Mm-hmm. Or if Apple just knows there's enough first adopter tech dorks. Oh yeah, uh, that absolutely. are going to walk around, yeah. and the people who are just walking through the city. Here, I'll show you. I mean, most of these I think are from New York, but like uh, the dude who's uh, doing the crosswalk there, and he's swiping in the air because mm-hmm. he's looking at stuff that's beyond the. It's so stupid. Like Silly. I'd feel like a jack off wearing this in my own house, let alone you walk. There's a guy driving a Tesla. These two dudes, you know, people are like, oh, everybody's on their phone. And somebody goes, hey, look at these two guys. <laughs> Not a phone in sight. They're just having lunch with these goggles on their heads. I don't understand. The most stolen wallet in history is what they called the guy who's on the subway just um, typing in midair while he's got his go- <laughs> goggles on. Oh, I love it. Well, this is the future everyone wanted. God bless you. Da dum dum dum. So, yeah, I think some of these people are probably getting paid or whatever, you know, someone's... But there's also people that just, yeah, they want to be the first to do it. They want to figure it out. They want to see how practical it actually is. And they look stupid, but I have seen some videos of people that have figured it out and they're using it in their own space. And at home, it can be kind of cool if you need to watch... 17 things at the same time. Well, that seems to be saying. the only thing you can do with this. And be like, well, you can put a screen over here, and then you can put a screen over here, and then you can put a screen over here. And it's right. Like, oh, what if people? Okay, I don't think I don't think I'll ever need this. How did the goggles? Again, do? I I think it's cool. I don't know if it's thirty five hundred dollars cool because you're still walking around with a cord that goes to a battery in your pocket. Right. How do the goggles? So you're not unencumbered completely. How do the goggles do everything but allow you to see? Like, how is there? They not- do allow you to no, see. No, you it. see past it. Like, there's, you can see the things kind of in cyberspace in front of you, but you can still see out the goggles. You can see where you're I was going. Say, yeah. Like, you there's won't. one, there's a video of a girl that's walking and she's got a map in midair that she's, but just seeing these people out in the wild and they're swiping at stuff they're looking at and you're just got, I mean, God bless these people, frankly. I mean, they're walking so the rest of us can run, but it's just at this point, it's, Pretty goofy. Give it five years, and if this if this actually catches on, there's gonna be, they're gonna make ones that aren't so clunky looking, with a like, battery like pack sunglasses. that is more hidden. That's gonna yeah. That's I think they're still gonna be goggle esque just because there's so many cameras and things that go into it. Yeah. But it's gonna they're gonna They'll find a way to make it down more, to something else. Yeah, they're gonna yeah. find a way to make oh, it more man. stylish. They'll and, get Tony Stark on the case. Or people are just gonna that. be like, I just I. There's gonna be more apps developed. There's gonna be more, and there's gonna be more interest, and in, and eventually, you're gonna see people with these regularly. Because Google Glass went away pretty f- yeah. quickly because people weren't there yet. I don't yeah. think. I think now they're there, but and the technology wasn't there yet. Right. The technology was just kind of like yeah, these goggles, whatever, look like they would give me like 
make me be like claustrophobic. And Casey Knight said, I watched video gonna, about him. Make you feel what? Claustrophobic. Oh, okay. Claustrophobic. Yeah, Tro. Tro. Claustrophobic. Say what, Bill? Uh, he he was doing a review on him, and he's like, this is the most futuristic type. Like, this is the the moment I had was, oh, this is what, like, all all the things that we've been promised. What you were promised, yeah. This, this feels the most like that stuff. You know, we've seen so many iterations of this in movies and TV shows, and this is the moment that I'm feeling, oh, this is that. So I think there's some interesting things that you can do with this. Uh, I'm not interested in paying $3,500 no, for it it's at not, all. It's not consumer-friendly yet. Yeah, but at least the price give, point give it isn't. five years and ten years, and I think it's going to be way – more popular and it's going to be way more accessible too because i i've used the other vr goggles i've used the MetaQuest 2 which is fun like to play some games and stuff on but it wasn't anything that i couldn't wait to use again it would right. be like you do it once you'd be like yeah that's, that's enough well after a while you probably get a headache yeah well it's just it was clunky and uncomfortable to wear and you get all sweaty in it and it's, yeah that's why I think it's funny when they show you the commercials of people exercising in them. I'm like, nobody's going to use no these way. to work out. Mm -hmm. No way. Your center of gravity's all off because you got this giant thing on your head, oh, and then you're going to sweat in it, right. and you know. Ugh. So that looks cool for a commercial because they're trying to they're trying to convince people yeah, that make like it seem like so practical and so many different uses, or that you're that people who are super active are going to be using it. It's going to mm -hmm. be like dudes using it for porn immediately, right? Or Women can use it to like try on outfits. Like, how would this dress look on me? I don't want the. I or want just the try holodeck. them on. That's what I want. No, you come on, Apple. Give me the holodeck. Yeah. I want that. I want the the room you go in. You go, uh, holodeck. Uh, give me who's that? Sweeney. What's that? Sweeney girl. Sweeney Todd. No. Sydney Sweeney. Sydney Sweeney. Um, and and me at a bar just having a nice time <laughs> together. <laughs> You're buying Sydney Sweeney a drink in a bar. Just to get things going. Yeah. Alan, why is Pound Cake's go-to intimidation tactic smear poop on myself? <laughs> yeah, why is it? He's like, he's our little, he's our Ted Nugent. You know how Ted Nugent wanted to get out of serving? Ted Nugent loves the troops so much that he uh, wanted to get out of the military by not wiping his ass or showering or, you know, sort of patriot he is. That's what Pound Cake's doing. It's the Ted Nugent approach. Well, Mary said you got to act crazier, so I can't think of anything more crazy than smearing poop on yourself. I said the same thing again. These are scenarios that I create in my head. If I, if reading to someone, if I'm in prison and reading to someone doesn't work, being their bitch doesn't work, next, next on the line is smearing poop on myself. No one wants to room with someone that has poop on them. This means a survival. <laughs> what what if it's mean? somebody who's really into poop? What if that's their yeah. kink? Well, then like, I'm their bitch. Well, then you played yourself, playa. I'm the poop baby. I'm the turd baby that they want. <laughs> poop baby. Wow, poop baby needs some drinky poo. I'm not, I'm not doing it for fun. I'm not wallowing around in my own filth. Good for you. I hate a, I hate a wallow in filth or anything else. Don't ever wallow. Everyone wants to call me out, like, I, I, I go to poop. Well, they're just what? trying to clarify things that come out of your mouth. Why would anyone? These are not things we're making up. These are quotes, and they are asking me to pass it along <laughs> to you to clarify. I thought that that was a good clarification. Mary said, "Out crazy someone, smear poop on yourself." That's pretty crazy. But then you have to also <laughs> ride home with poop on you. Yeah, it's then a forty you... minute train ride. Or you could wallow. <laughs> you could wallow home with poop on you. Alan, those goggles are going to get cheaper just so they can sell you more stuff. It's going to be all ads. Well, yeah. I mean, listen, every form of technology that comes along is a way to sell you more things. But, you know, I don't know. I, I, I think that the I think the concept is really cool. Um, You know, and but this is some people love to be first adopters. I like to wait a couple of generations. Yeah, let, it, mm -hmm. let, it, let them work the kinks out. Yeah. Right. Let all these other dorks uh, get out there and, and show us what the downsides are. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I saw one video where. They were trying to use it on the train, and as the train takes off, all the like screens or whatever they had were in the location that he was. So like you can't use it on the train because <laughs> it it doesn't know where to be. Doesn't go with you. Yeah. Well, and those are the things again. 
they figure out where all the bugs are by having people use them. Right. In real world situations. And then Apple go, you know, because those people, you can bet your ass they're going to be the ones that are complaining. Mm -hmm. I spent $3,500 on this and, you know, yeah. I can't, whatever. My screens are at the last stop. <laughs> I got to go back and find my screens.